What you see on the screen right now are the differences between the original 1884 Great Controversy and the edited 1888 Great Controversy. I'm only going to read the statement from the 1884 version of the Great Controversy and then point out the changes made by the SDA leaders in the 1888 version to keep the video short. But this is what it says. As the time comes for the loud cry to be given, the Lord will work through humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit than by the training of literary institutions. Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. The fearful results of a union of church and state, the inroads of spiritualism, the stealthy but rapid progress of the papal power, all will be unmasked. By these solemn warnings, the people will be stirred. Thousands upon thousands have never listened to words like these. In amazement, they hear the testimony that Babylon is the church, fallen because of her errors and sins, because of her rejection of the truth sent to her from heaven. The people go to their former teachers with the eager inquiry, Are these things so? The ministers present fables, prophesy smooth things to soothe their ears, and quiet the awakened conscience. But many refuse to be satisfied with the mere authority of men, and demand a plain, thus saith the Lord. The popular ministry, like the Pharisees of old, are filled with anger. As their authority is questioned, they denounce the message as of Satan and stir up the sin-loving multitudes to revile and persecute those who proclaim it. So, first off, notice that they removed the prophetic term, loud cry, and replaced it with this in the 1888. They said, thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed as the time comes for it to be given with greatest power. No mention of the loud cry at all. And only the third angel is mentioned. Yet, students of prophecy know that the loud cry comes after the messages of all three angels are repeated in our day, so as to better define the loud cry. As prophesied, the SDA church not only stopped preaching the messages of angels one and two, they are openly defending the Pope in Rome as a holy leader in print and on camera. This is done so the people in the pews, and especially the world at large, never hear the message of the first angel that declares with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. We all know how the fourth commandment ties in here, as the same description of the Lord is shared as is found in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. But because they honor the Pope by declaring him holy leader, as well as honor him with many Sunday-keeping SDA churches, they cannot proclaim God's law as the basis of the investigated judgment today, for in so doing will make it difficult for Rome to convince all 501c3 church leaders to lobby for and then enforce Sunday laws to stop what they claim as climate change instead of the harbinger of the coming of the Lord. In so doing means they must hide how judgment is passed as well as go directly against God's law to please the dying God of Rome just as prophesied. They also refuse to proclaim the second angel's message, which all students of prophecy know confirms what both the Old and New Testament says about who and what Babylon is today. And so to prevent the Church of Rome that embraces 86.2% Babylonian paganism into their dogmatic structure, the apostate SD8 leaders only echo the message of the third angel, which speaks of the mark of the beast. But since the first and second angel's messages are rarely declared by the SD8 leaders, most in the churches have no idea they need to make their path straight for the coming of the Lord, and they have no idea how angel number two defines the beast then enforces the mark in the third angel's message. That is why most people are easily fooled today into thinking the mark is a 666 tattoo, the barcode, or even a very chip that's implanted under the skin. The Seventh-day Adventist leaders also removed from their 1888 Great Controversy the statement that says the fearful results of a union of church and state 
and they changed it to enforcing the observances of the church by civil authority so as to make it appear more like the government is the main villain here, when in fact it's both the church and the state working hand in hand just as the contract of the 501c3 demands by signing on to it. Hence the reason they endorse homosexuality, preach Allah is God, and the Vatican climate change agenda from all 501c3 pulpits, just to name a few. As of December 2nd, 2017, the 501c3 pastors have been given the ability to lobby religious laws, and we all know the mark is a religious law. Every time you see it mentioned, the word worship is right there with it. That subtle change in the wording in the Seventh-day Adventists 1888 version of the Great Controversy, wherein they removed the words union of church and state, is all that's needed to make it appear to many that the church has nothing to do with the civil authorities that enforce Sunday laws. But without the church leaders lobbying for these laws, as well as working with the civil authorities, they never would be able to pass Sunday laws in the first place. But the wording says only the civil authorities will enforce the religious laws, which we know is a lie. This was also done to foster confusion when the obedient people of God actually go forth as prophesied to expose the 501c3 for what it truly is, which, by the way, some of us have been doing now for literally decades. Due to the lukewarm methods of the Seventh-day Adventist leaders, most are unaware that the creation of the image of the beast in Rome, as well as the climate change agenda, is a must for the mark to be enforced in America, and then all the world. As prophesied, the ninth hour, Seventh-day Adventist leaders failed to do their jobs. And as soon as the remnant of her seed noticed it, they left the apostate church to do as prophecy said they will do in the eleventh hour. And so if you are Seventh-day Adventist and you've watched the last few videos I made regarding all the changes made by the apostate SDA leaders, can you finally see a pattern here? Whenever Sister White speaks of things that the present-day SDA leaders are doing, they remove them from her books to keep their position safe and the tithe flowing into their pockets. Seriously, if you want to be prepared for what's actually already begun to happen, you need to trash the NIV Bible that the SDA leaders are using in their sermons now and also placing in all the pews and get your hands on a King James Bible and study it daily. And then go to vbates.com and get the original writings of Sister White that are 100% intact so as to have the inside information that the apostate leaders are doing all they can to hide from you that can actually be backed 100% with scripture so as to prepare yourself and your precious family for the coming of the Lord. Thank you for watching. God bless.